united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning, welcome to your program, United with Christ. We are here to give you a very, very interesting message. We have a special guest and we thank Grace Rendell. We thank Channel 38, his awesome team for having this uh, amazing programs. It's the only uh, Christian station in the whole region. In other great cities like St. Louis, Missouri and others, there's no uh, Christian TV, so we have the blessing in this city, in this region, to have Christian television. So thank you, Grace Rendell, thank you, KSE, and thank you for you for being here. I want to introduce Phil Tupper. Phil Tupper is the point of contact of equipping the saints, a ministry of discipleship in El Paso and Juarez. Phil? It's a pleasure to be here today. Phil, um, I have some questions that I want to ask you so our audience will know. What is Equipping the Saints? First, tell us about your ministry, Equipping the Saints, what it is about. Equipping the Saints came about as a result of an individual, his name was Dave Dawson. Uh, he went to Singapore uh, with a ministry called The Navigators. And while he was in Singapore, he began to <clears throat> apply the principles of the scriptures in trying to help people multiply their lives towards fulfilling the Great Commission. And over that period of time that he was there, one of the local churches was watching what was happening and how he had taken a group of 15 people and over a, a period of 13 years saw God reproduce them generationally to the point that there was a thousand people. And so the local church was watching this happen and they said, Dave, would you come and please help us? And so that started a new journey for Dave and that's approximately the year of 1973. And so Dave took a one year sabbatical. He took all the tools that he had been using in the area of discipleship and he put them into a curriculum that people could use, understand, and then pass them on generationally. And since those days, the material now is being used in Bible colleges and seminaries here in the United States. And the uh, material has been translated into 40 languages and used in 80 countries around the world. So Phil, you are telling us that these men started uh, this program, Equipping the Saints, to evangelize Singapore. Exactly, that's where it started. And, and so it's just continued today, for example, uh, Dave just came back from Ethiopia and uh, late summer of last year he went and spoke to 2,000 pastors from 105 countries in Thailand and out of that came a relationship with a pastor who is responsible for 350 churches in the country of Ethiopia and the pastor asked would you please come and help us in the area of disciple making and so last month Dave went there and ministered to these pastors in Ethiopia. So Ethiopia, Africa, Europe, Asia, the United States, everywhere, people need to know how to be a disciple, not a follower of Christ, right? Yes, yes, actually what we're trying to do, and I have an example here that you can take a look at, is that this illustration here in this wheel is designed, and it's on the verses of Matthew 22, 37 through 40. And he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is a great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So what we are trying to do is help people understand the great commandment, which is loving God with all our heart, soul, and mind, is tied into the great commission, which is loving people as ourselves. And so what we're trying to do is then help people develop disciplines in their lives in order to see God fulfill that. And so um, what we've done then is tried to bring that into focus for people. And we have some practical things, thank you, that we can actually be doing. In order to live out the first commandment, we're teaching people how to study the word of God and how to develop a prayer life. And then in the second commandment, loving people as ourselves. We're trying to teach people how to do evangelism 
But the focus is discipleship and disciple making because that's what the Lord has commanded us to do. And so what we're trying to do today is help pastors and anybody who has an interest in being obedient towards fulfilling the Great Commission to live these things out, which obviously is living the obedient Christian life. So Phil, um, how, when you say generational, it's not enough for me to go to church. It's not enough for me to go just to a Bible study or maybe a cell. I mean, it's great, I'm growing, I'm learning, everyone learns in the church, but what is the difference then about making disciples, being a disciple, making disciples generationally? What is the mandate for the church? Can you talk about it? <coughs> well, we can briefly talk about it uh, because what we're trying to do is uh, I appreciate your comments there, is that it's more than just a Bible study. If, if you take our Lord's life, yes, we know He came to die for us on a cross. Christianity is founded upon that principle. But our Lord also came to the earth to show us how to live life on this earth. And so what did He do? Well, He healed many, He helped many, He fed many, but he discipled 12. Mm -hmm. And so what he did was he began to build into a small group of men because he had a mission for them. And that mission was that they were gonna take it on from there and teach it to others. So what are we trying to do today? We are trying to help people not only understand how to apply these principles into their lives, but we try to help them and train them in the area of disciple making in order to see them go generationally deep. And what we've seen here in El Paso specifically over the last four to five years in a number of locations on both sides of the border, pastors and other people are generationally beginning to reproduce. And this is one tool that the Lord is using in order to help with that process. Uh, Phil, talking about generational, because it's important for us to understand what generational deep means. Uh, I remember last year during the uh, Equipping the Saints conference, it's a conference about discipleship that we're going to talk about the one coming this year. But I remember something very powerful that impact all of us. Uh, three ladies came to the front and you introduced them. One was your wife, Lena Tupper, and two other ladies, and that uh, Lena was discipling one of the ladies. That lady discipled another person, and that person was actually discipling others. So it looks like the mother, the daughter, the granddaughter, and that granddaughter uh, starting to disciple others. Is that what you mean with generation, generationally deep? Are, are we doing this in our churches? Well, uh, there's the great challenge that we have to ask people today is that are you seeing God use you to go generationally deep? Because that's exactly what we're talking about. I'll just give you an update on the illustration because we are, we're gonna ask those ladies to come back this year. And here's the reason why. Um, I'll just give you some names. My wife, Lena, was ministering to Sandra Compost. Sandra was ministering to Marta. Marta is ministering to Connie. And now we're to, uh, finding out that Connie is ministering to another woman. And so here they are, they're five generations deep. And the thing we have to ask ourselves today, are we seeing that in our lives? Are we seeing that generational reproduction actually happening within the church structure? There may be a, a very deep personal question we should ask ourselves. Because could we suggest today, Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, and he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers. For what? Equipping the saints to do what? The work of service. So we have pastors today. What's their responsibility? Their responsibility is to train the body. What's the body's responsibility? Go make disciples. And so what we're trying to do then is help people understand that so they can live it out in their lives and they can begin to see how God can take them 
and begin to go generationally deep. And the interesting thing, Betty, that I would like to even suggest to you, that you see those women that you were referring to, is that each one of those women are ministering to other women. So it's just not the fact that they're ministering to the next generation below them. Each generation, my wife is ministering to three other women. Uh, Sandra, same thing. Marta, same thing. And Marta is ministering to ladies that are in Wyatt. So here's the beautiful thing that we're seeing is we're seeing God use this tool on both sides of the border with pastors and other people. That's, that's amazing. That's awesome. Uh, I want to read what the scripture says in Matthew 28, 18. It says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. And this is amazing because the Lord called each one of us to make disciples. It's not enough just to go and sit in the church. I need to make disciples. You need to make disciples. All of us need to make disciples. But uh, how can the people feel, let's say, the the lady who is a widow lives by herself, the young man who goes to college, the men who goes to the, or women and women that goes to the marketplace, how can they do this? I mean, they, it's enough, they, they run on Sunday to church, they go during the week maybe to a Bible study. How can they accomplish to make disciples? What would be your advice to the churches or to the people or to the leaders or pastors or um, home cell leaders sure. how can they do this well um, the, the, what we're seeing today in a, in a lot of training that's happening inside the church is that we're teaching a lot of good things when it comes to helping people understand the Bible and develop a good prayer life that is a wonderful thing but I'm not sure how well we're doing in the area of doing discipleship we do a lot of evangelism because we're always encouraging people, go share your faith with others. But I'm not so sure how, we're, how well we're doing in the area of evangelism. And I truly believe that's one of the reasons God's using this tool in the body of Christ the way he is using it today. Because it is focused on trying to help people to live out the Great Commission that you were just reading about in their lives. So how would I answer the question you just shared with me? What we're trying to do is try to help people to understand that where you are in life, if you're a mother with small children in your house, if you're an individual that works outside the home or in other aspects of life, you mentioned also an elderly person. One of the things we're trying to help elderly people with today is to encourage them that they have so much to offer, so much to offer about life in general and if they've been walking with God for a number of years, they have so much spiritual heritage that they could be turn, uh, passing on to the next generation. And I was just reading an article not too long ago, how the millennials respect the older people and they long to be able to have relationships with them. So there's an interesting thing for maybe some of you that are actually watching right now. If you're saying, I'm elderly, I don't have anything to offer the body, I would totally disagree with you. I can tell you an example. I was just recently at a conference for some biblical counseling training. And there's an individual who was overall responsible for the conference training that he was telling about a woman, a, a single woman, who was sort of, she was elderly, she was trying to figure out, you know, what would God have her to do? And through time and circumstances, this is in uh, Indiana, she had a skill of sewing. She really enjoyed sewing. So the pastor asked her, well, would you consider going to uh, a, a poverty location within the city if we provide a facility for you and begin to minister to these people? 
And she said, I'm willing to do that. But it, she was an introvert. This was not very easy for her to do personally. But she decided that she was going to have faith that God could use her. And through the next year or two, these young people started coming in and just enjoying being in her presence. And she was teaching them things. And they were making things for the local community. So I would suggest to you is that everyone needs to figure out how they're going to be involved in disciple making and what is that going to look like in their own personal lives. Phil, um, the books of equipping the saint, the discipleship, helps people how to go. It's very detailed. Uh, if you have one or two people that you can start discipling, these books will help them to go A, B, C. It's easy to follow. So how, how would you recommend uh, people maybe come into the conference so get more information about it? I would say that's where it needs to start is that Please, if, the, if you're intrigued by what's being shared here at this moment, I would really encourage you to come to this conference on the 20, it's the 22nd of April at Emmanuel Church on Hawkins, 1201 Hawkins. If you would come to that, it starts at 9 o'clock, and there's going to be a, uh, two main speakers. One of them actually is going to be the director of the ministry that we were talking about, uh, equipping the saints, another individual. Uh, Soup Campbell lives in Memphis. He's coming to speak about his journeys in life and what disciple making, uh, how God's using him to influence people around the world in the area of disciple making. There's going to be workshops that you can attend in order to enhance your training. So I would suggest that, yes, this is one way uh, to continue your journey. Some of you may say, well, Phil, I'm already making disciples. If you are, hallelujah. But my question to you would be, how many generations deep are you? I was recently having a conversation with a pastor, and he was telling me about, Phil, you know, if we really want to evaluate the impact of disciple making was inside a church today, we need to at least go three or four generations deep. I couldn't agree with him more. Because until you see it going three and four generations deep, maybe your strategy is really not working. Because that's what he, our Lord meant when he told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.2. 2, and the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, these entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So there's your generations. Paul talking to Timothy. Paul telling Timothy, go find faithful men. Well, what are those faithful men to do? They're supposed to teach others. There's four generations. So if you're seeing four generations deep with where you're fellowshipping today, I rejoice with you. In fact, I wouldn't call you, ask you to call me because I want to have lunch with you and understand what you're doing so I can maybe adjust my uh, methodology for making disciples. And so there's what we're after when we're trying to help people understand that God can use you. There's a couple questions I'd like to ask. How many of you viewing this right now have children who do not know Jesus? How many of you have grandchildren who do not know Jesus? How many of you are concerned with where morality is going in our society? What are we going to do to reverse it? What are we going to do to change culturally what's happening both in Mexico and in the United States? We have a unique opportunity here in Juarez and El Paso to make a unique change in two countries, would you please consider how God would want you to be a part of that process? Uh, Phil, equipping the saints is a discipleship, um, I'm not saying program, but it's a, a lifestyle. But I have been involved in learning through all those books that are progressively teaching us deeper about the Great Commission, which, which is uh, making disciples. I personally have been in your home with your wife and, and two other couples learning. Uh, it is encouraged for people to go 
uh, it's not to have like a big class in a church, like 30 signing for the class. No, this is more like one to one, right? Yeah. It's sitting with the person, it's talking to them, it's learning about their life, praying with them, encouraging them, and helping them. Uh, some dynamics in the discipleship, specifically equipping the saints, uh, I was really <laughs> intrigued and I really embrace and love it because we learn and it's part of the curriculum, memorize the scriptures, mm -hmm. uh, other readings, answering some questions that force us to spend time in the Word and to learn and memorize the scriptures. Uh, would you like to uh, explain in a little more detail about it? Uh, yes. Uh, we never ask anybody to do anything that's not scriptural. But if I can show you from the scriptures different biblical principles Will you do them? Let's take just a couple of things you mentioned. Devotionals, having time in the morning. Mark 1, 45. And in the morning, a great while before day, he rose up and went out to a lonely place, and there he prayed. Well, that's our Lord. Our Lord did that. And if the God of the universe saw the need to go do that and spend time with the Heavenly Father on a consistent daily basis, why would he not want us to do the same thing? So we can tie into our Savior on a consistent basis. You mentioned scripture memory. Psalm 119, 9 and 11. How does a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to thy word. Verse 11. I have laid up thy word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. See, one of the best ways that we can see God's word transform our hearts is to memorize it. Because as you're memorizing it, we're hoping you're going to take that process and meditate on it. Because as you meditate on it, we would suggest you're moving it from the head to the heart. You're putting it into your life. And so as we're trying to teach people how to live out these biblical principles in their lives, we see how God dynamically changes their hearts and they begin to understand why God really put them on this earth I'll tell you another quick story here I was meeting with a pastor on Friday today's Friday it was Wednesday I was meeting with a pastor on Wednesday he said Phil let me tell you about this story he was meeting with this gentleman and uh, don't know his name but I know from the way it was described to me that God had really blessed him monetarily he had a very large home, had a lot of materialistic types of things, and so God had really blessed him. Well, over a seven-month period as this pastor was beginning to minister to him using some of this material, just recently he came into the pastor's office and said, Pastor, I understand why God put me on this earth now, and it is dynamically changing his life. He has put his house on the market. He is getting rid of the materialistic things which just consumed his life because he realizes now that's not why God put him on this earth. And he's trying to get rid of some of this stuff so he can begin to focus on eternal things that he knows pleases our God and Savior. That is awesome. Phil, um, we have only a few minutes more in, in, in the program. But uh, I, I just want uh, to emphasize, the Lord is using you to minister to pastors, to get together with them, to explain what all this is about. Some of them, like Pastor Hellman Avila, is taking that to his church. Can you explain us, like in two minutes, uh, how you are talking to pastors? So you are open to meet with any pastor, right? With any uh, group of pastors or leaders and share about this, how they can implement this if they want to do it in their churches. Uh, that's very true, Betty. Uh, but I, I want to stress, I'm, I'm always willing and able to meet with pastors. And in fact, myself being a pastor is because we realize that a lot of times Pastors are struggling with trying to, yeah, they want to live out the Great Commission in their churches, but they're trying to figure out how to go about doing it. And could we suggest it's not about, it's not about programs, 8, 12, 16-week programs? Because this is a question we have to ask ourselves. How long did Jesus invest in his disciples? 
let's just take an estimate, two to three years. And if it's two to three years, then we have to ask ourselves, if the God of the universe took two to three years to build into somebody's life, and we're a sinner, saved by the grace of God, how long do you think it takes us to build into somebody's life? I would suggest it takes longer. And that's the reason we would say it, you, it doesn't happen in 8, 12, or 16 weeks. That's why we're not fulfilling generational disciple making. So I am more than willing to meet with really anybody. I had a youth minister just recently said, after he heard about what was going on, how God was using this ministry on both sides of the border, he said, Phil, I'm intrigued. I want to learn more. So next Monday I'm having lunch with him because we have youth ministries that are taking this and they're using it amongst the youth. That is awesome. And I can tell you personally, we are going to the seminary, Todas las Naciones, all the nations in Juarez, where the seminary director invited him to teach this to the third year students that are going to graduate and become pastors. And he's going to teach discipleship, and I am translating for him, so I'm a witness. Um, we have just a, a minute. I want to invite you. Phil, would you tell us about the conference? Yes, um, you can see the, the flyer that Betty's holding up here. You can see um, the two individuals I was alluding to not too long ago uh, with Dave Dawson and Soup Campbell. And, uh, and then at the bottom, which the, it's, you may not be able to see it on, on TV here, but it's the, all the workshops that are listed. Important thing is it starts at 9 o'clock. The cost is $15 which is a nominal fee we would suggest. Lunch is included in that fee. We're gonna give you a handout to be able to take notes from the conference. So that gives you an idea of uh, a little bit about the conference. So we invite all of you, uh, tell to your pastor, tell to your uh, leaders, tell to others in church, uh, April the 22nd, that's a Saturday. Write it down. April 22nd, it starts at 9 o'clock. It finishes around uh, 5, 5 p.m. Yes. And um, 1201 Hawkins, 1201 Hawkins in Emmanuel Church. So we are very happy that we are with you, that you are with us today. We are going to pray and be praying for you that the Great Commission will, will be in the church and we will bring the good news of the gospel, making disciples for the glory of God. God bless you, we love you, and we pray for you. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSEE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903, or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.